for me, uh, when I first started out, I was, uh, you know, like any kid, always loving rock and roll. At a young age, I saw Woodstock, and that basically changed everything. Right? Seeing Hendrix play uh, uh, Star Spangled Banner. The thing that really hit my heart was when he played that little jazzy piece at the end. That just uh, floored me, and so I had to start getting a guitar. Yeah, for care, my guitars, I'm always experimenting with them, always trying different things, hacking them up. But live performance? No, they're, they're victims. Sorry. When I get up in the morning and start playing guitar, I'm trying to find something new. And that's where that, that tension and fighting comes in with it. It's the kind of instrument that has so many colors, percussively and tonally with harmonics and all that sort of stuff that you can really uh, have great journeys with it. The song I'm going to play for you is called Blue Shift Principle. For me, like I said, I, I sit down and I do a lot of noodling and, and through that process, maybe two or three notes will stack together that I haven't heard before. And then I'll kind of zone in on that and then the next thing you have this kind of a riff. When that happens, that gets you excited about going forward with the song, right? For me, I've always kind of had a percussive element to my playing. And so when I come down, I wanted to have a, a strong lick that had a hook to it, but had push to it too, right? And for an acoustic player, it's a little bit tricky. So when I play, I actually, um, come down and with my palm and I'll hit on the top. And, uh, and there's lots of different places you can do this. It's a very percussive instrument, right? But for me, I, I like to keep that constant pulse going of a kick. So I'll come down and I'll get that kick sound. But now what I do is I actually take the thumb and I get the string. So you've got a string by itself, you got the kick by itself, and then you, you get them both together. And so I wanted to have that push, right? Because when you see a good rock band, it's that push, that bass and kick that make it happen, right? So that was the start of it. And then, of course, as you got this going on, you have to have some kind of counterpoint of a rhythm going on. So I came up with this. Just kept playing that over and over. And then as you get going, you can add more colors by touch and bending and that kind of stuff, right? And like any song, you have to start a work kind of verse, you know, bridge chorus. And I don't really do it that way. I have more like sections that um, just kind of naturally flow. So I'll just keep messing or messing around and sometimes things come quick, sometimes they, they take a while, right? So there's about maybe five or six or seven sections that kind of go ups and downs throughout the song. lessons and stuff like that but it just uh, like I said I, I wasn't about being precision and so you know when you go to teachers and stuff like that you have to learn scales and stuff and it was just I just wanted to create and like I said I didn't keep care if I even got out of the bedroom it just was if I could write a new song uh, that'd be really cool so Song's different, and um, you know the experiences I've had is that some sometimes a song will come in five minutes, and they sometimes feel like the best. Sometimes a song takes a long time, and people feel that those songs are too good. But I disagree. I mean, there's all sorts of processes that can make things work. Because I've got songs I've written where there are too many parts in it. Songs where there's a great section and a bad section. A song where everything worked at once, right? So I don't have really have a formula, um, other than I know that you have to make changes because people just don't like listening to the same thing over and over. The idea is that um, I'll do something and you, you know, because I'm not bound to traditional music, I'm still bound by that 4-4 or that you know, various feels and, and I know after maybe four bars something's got to change. You, feel, you just feel necessity something's got to change. So I'll, I'll do that and I'll try to make the tune flow. I've done work.
workshops for Yamaha and a lot of players would come up and yeah, well, how do you do that technique? I want to do it just exactly like you. And, and my approach is like, don't bother because it's going to take you longer to do that when you be you and work your nuances that are not good right now. Like for me, I have so many bad habits, but I've turned them into something that's musical. And I think every player has a touch. It doesn't matter who you are. It's your personality that's going to sort of bring that touch to the instrument. And so it's just trusting that process. And, and I think that's doable for anybody. And I mean, if I, if I was to say I could be kind of the voice for that, because I can't read or write music. And uh, you know, I've won some major contests by going up against guys that are like way better than I could ever possibly be. Thank you.